the C H piercings, vertical clitoral hood piercings. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 25. So you probably want to stick around. are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as an expert, as someone who has done this piercing numerous times and helped people heal through the process. Before we get into that, I just want to give a little bit of disclaimer. I'm going to be discussing parts of the female genitalia, anatomy, etc., um, in the piercing that is involved with, with that particular part of the anatomy. If you are one of those people that's easily offended by such things, or you are in an area of the world where it may not be age appropriate for you to be watching this, please go to another video. There are plenty of videos, especially if you're interested in piercing and tattooing on this channel that are age appropriate. If you're looking for some type of fancy little tiddly uh, sexual gratification, you're going to be disappointed with this. This is in no way, shape, or form in that direction. This is solely for the purpose of education, uh, basically giving people pros and cons um, on this piercing so that they can make an educated decision on whether or not this piercing is right for them or maybe their partner's getting it done and they want to learn more about it before they get it done. That out of the way. Uh, for those who are new to piercing, this particular piercing is uh, done through the clitoral hood. Now, the clitoral hood is located on the top of the female genitalia. Um, it is a flap of tissue that lays over the top of the clitoris. Um, usually, sometimes it's connected to the labia minoris or uh, the inner labias. Uh, the piercing is done vertically, straight up and down through that thin tissue with the jewelry laying against the top of the clitoris. Now, um, everybody's shaped differently. Uh, if you're one of those people that's been looking around on the internet and you've been looking at pictures and you're like, my lady don't look like that. Don't feel bad. That's normal. Uh, female genitalia, men, it's kind of bigger or smaller, but for the most part, it's kind of shaped the same and the anatomy is almost the same. Women, there's a much more broader diversity than there is with male genitalia. So yes, you probably can get it done. It doesn't have to be exactly like that person, etc. With this piercing, as far as anatomy, and I'll go into this more, there's kind of two types of anatomy with females. Uh, they usually refer to them as hills and valleys. This piercing is better if you have a valley. Now, everybody's a little bit in between the two. Um, you can get this done if you do have a hill too. You're a little bit more open to that. So let's get into the five advantages, five disadvantages. We'll start with the pros, the advantages. Number one, can increase sexual sensation and pleasure. Uh, you do have a piece of jewelry that is laying against your clitoris at all times. Stimulation of that jewelry in the area can cause increased sensation. Number two, this piercing has a long history of healing without issue. Um, and it is not a new piercing. This is not something that's very experimental. It is something that's been around for a very long time, at least since the uh, late 80s. Many, many people have healed this piercing out without any issues at all. Number three, this piercing is prone to staying open longer than other piercings. Now, this is not a 100% deal, but it's not unusual for this piercing to be uh, abandoned for a few years and not have problems putting the jewelry back in. Granted, you should always, in all cases, keep jewelry and piercings that you want to keep because that's the only way that you can guarantee that's going to be not going to be a problem. However, I have had clients that have had it pierced, kept it for a couple of years, Life's changed, things changed, or for one reason or another, they had to remove the jewelry and didn't get it back in in time or what have you. And they come in four or five years later, sometimes even six, seven years later, and they go, yeah, I want to get it re-pierced. I miss it. Uh, the first thing I'll generally say is, hey, 
let's let's go back in the back and we'll get out a taper pin and we'll see if the piercing is still open. And I would say nine times out of 10, it is. Um, Rich uh, is always, I think it's always better to have that piercing, maybe slightly stretched a little bit, put new jewelry in it, then to go through the whole healing process again and the trauma, the piercing and everything else. Anyway, number four, this piercing is not going to affect lifestyle the way that other piercings do. Uh, it's not going to affect whether or not you can play sports, whether or not you can compete in competitive activities that require you to not have visible piercings. Um, it's not going to affect sleep, walking. Um, it may affect uh, certain activities at first, but that will go away fairly quickly. Uh, number five, no one needs to know that you have this piercing. This is one of those piercings that if you work in a profession where visible piercings are just not something that's going to be accepted or you have uh, lifestyle situations where, where the people around you are very conservative, this is a piercing that you can have that no one needs to know you have it except your own sexual partners and anyone you tell. And one final thing, a bonus fact. Number six, the bonus fact. This piercing, like all genital piercings, tends to be a very initial experience initially, the pain-wise, but unlike other piercings where you have throbbing and aching immediately after, it's almost like, a, oh, that hurts, and then it's over. Until you bump it or nudge it, you're not even going to know it's there. So that's your bonus fact. Or bonus con. Pro. Pro. Bonus pro. Now let's move on to the cons and disadvantages. Number one, this is a piercing that is very anatomy specific. If you do not have the correct anatomy for this particular piercing, you can't get it done. The, there has to be enough room there to support the piercing in the jewelry. Um, and there also the uh, area needs to be large enough and loose enough that a needle receiving tube can get under it to do the piercing properly. So keep that in mind. And I'll go into a little bit more about that when I get into the consultation. Number two uh, of the of the disadvantages, you are more prone with a genital piercing to sexually transmitted diseases. Even after the piercing is healed, I'm going to suggest that you practice safe sex whenever you switch partners. The reason being is that you have a metal object in soft tissue. It's probably going to tear more readily, um, and thus you're more likely to have an open wound. You have an exchange of bacteria with your partner or virus. Um, in most cases, and the next thing you know, you have an STD. So regardless, even if you don't have a genital piercing, you should be practicing safe sex when you switch partners. It's just good practice. Number three, this is one of those things that has been kind of a heavily debated thing since the piercing first came about. Since the jewelry is in constant contact with the clitoris, uh, some people seem to feel that it loses sensation over time. Now, my theory on this is, because A, I don't have female genitalia and I don't have this piercing, I don't know how I would experience that, but just so you know, um, with anything that's new, especially sexually, and because our mind is our largest sexual muscle, the newness of the sensation in the sensation itself can be very exciting and it can add that element to the sexual activity. Over time, that sensation is going to be commonplace. Just like we've all experienced the, the wonders of new love, the newness of it wears off and it's not quite as exciting as it once was. Now, whether or not that actually is reducing sensation or the fact that this part of the anatomy is not used to constant contact, so it kind of numbs it out a little bit, is neither here nor there. The thing that kind of is surprising is I usually, it's a very small percentage of the people that we pierce that do in fact say that they have lost or noticed a reduction in sensation. And even those have said that it's still better than it was before it was pierced. You should know that going in, though. Number four, this kind of goes back to the whole sensation thing. I have had clients where they have found this much stimulation or the type of stimulation that is going on uncomfortable, flat out. Uh, for one reason or another, the way they're wired sexually or otherwise or their, their sensitivity in the area or maybe just the thought of it, 
for one reason or another, they find it uncomfortable. I would say this is one out of 100 maybe, but that is also a possibility too, so you should know that going in. Number five, can bleed off and on for up to about five days to a week in some cases, usually it stops in a couple of days. This will happen regardless. It happens with old genital piercings. You do need to make precautions for that, which I will get into a little bit in the consultation. Now I'm going to go through the consultation. What I would say if you came into my studio and said, hey, Devo, I want to get a vertical clitoral hood piercing. First thing I'm going to tell you is you're looking at an average chilling time of anywhere from six to eight weeks, but I suggest treating it like a healing piercing for a minimum of three months. Uh, just to be on the safe side, especially if you're sexually active. Um, what that's going to entail is a few things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to suggest is doing hot soaks with warm water and sea salt or using a sterile saline spray for 10 minutes twice daily and rinsing afterwards. Also cleaning off the area using an antimicrobial or germicidal soap at least once a day, twice if you feel like you've contaminated the area rinsing under running water, and urinating afterwards. Now let's get into cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends wherever possible. The only time you need any contact with the piercing is when you're cleaning it or doing soaks. Also keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. Um, no oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on or around the piercing for a minimum of six months. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That just means you need to use some type of latex barrier, meaning condoms, dental dams, et cetera. You also want to avoid uh, any warming gels, anything that's uh, reactive, lubricants that are not water-based, and anything that has spermicide because they don't feel good. Uh, gentle at first, figure out what you can handle, adjust if something is uncomfortable. You also want to keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of. That means anything but your own cleaned and well-maintained bathtub. No swimming at all until it's completely healed. Also, uh, keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just germ magnets. They're just going to drag everything into there. Um, and your bedding. Gross. This piercing sometimes will bleed off and on for anywhere from one to five days. It varies from person to person. I do suggest wearing a sanitary napkin um, or pad during that initial week. Uh, not only because it's going to cut down the likelihood of standing clothing, but it also helps with keeping the moisture down in the area, which cuts down the amount of bacteria and other pathogens uh, when it's most acceptable to infection. And also some cushioning while it's going through that initial tender phase. One of the things I would suggest when you're going in, some things that kind of prepare you to what that experience is going to be like. First thing is, it's not a bad idea to bring along your own pad. Um, usually, if somebody doesn't bring something, I will give them a piece of gauze to put inside their underwear. Um, that's not really the best option. If you have pads, it makes it a little bit easier, and it's less likely to stick to the wound. If you do have a piece of gauze on there, I generally suggest if it doesn't want to fall off on its own, jump in the shower and soak it up really well and let it fall off on its own. Another thing, uh, this piercing, because it is so anatomy specific, usually involves a, a checking the anatomy before even going through the process of selecting jewelry or going through the the release form and et cetera. And what that involves is I'll have a client come in, I'll say, Please sit down. I need to get to the area. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, usually I ask if they can to take at least one pant leg out, underwear two. Then we will take a cotton tip applicator, pull off as much of the cotton as we possibly can, use a little bit of water-based lubricant, and we will put it underneath the clitoris to see how pronounced it is and how loose the tissue is. This will determine whether or not there's enough structure there um, and if we're able to even do the piercing. Now, uh, one final thing, jewelry. Usually, traditionally, this is done with curved barbells. Um, most people end up with that particular option. It can be done with rings. Rings tend to have a lot more contact and tend to do a lot more movement, but I've had clients that have healed them out for years. I've been doing this for years. I've had clients heal out with rings numerous, numerous times. As far as stimulation, um, 
I've had clients where we've pierced with the ring and they just couldn't wait to get the barbell in, got the barbell in and found it less interesting and wanted to go back to the ring. That uh, sometimes because there is more stimulation, the ring might be better. So what I'm saying is you may want to experiment with different types of jewelry and see what works best for you. Now we've got that all out of the way. Um, that's about all I can probably tell you on that particular piercing today. If you feel like I didn't cover something, if you feel like you have something that you could add to the conversation, or maybe I brought up a question about something you're not quite sure what the answer is, leave a comment. I'm happy. I generally answer them whenever I have time. Um, and other people on here will also generally answer them too. Uh, part of the goal of this is to build a community where people feel safe talking about these sort of things and can get decent information about them. So if you can, can contribute to the conversation, please do so. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. Uh, if you would like to see more of these in the future, please subscribe. That's how that happens. Hit that notification bell if you would like to be notified every time we post one of these. Another thing I'm going to ask you to do is check out, or not ask, or demand, but suggest that you check out our merch store. Uh, link is in the description. You can find all kinds of designs there. Uh, input it on whatever you like, from t-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, travel mugs, tote bags, backpacks, just about anything you can imagine. And that way you're showing your support for us and also helping us to continue to do these. And one final thing. First off, have a good day. I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your piercing needs in the future.